final phase, it will loop back to the beginning. Careful arrangement of phases can produce a powerful sequence. As a At the moment, it's good to be on the road again. A wanderlust is nothing rare in the people of Rawatai, but often I think myself alone in loving the land as much as the sea. What shall we see next? I wonder. So, how are you holding up? I'm ready if you are. <laughs> tell me about yourself. Hmm. What shall I tell? I am Kanarua, born in the royal city of Takoa, from which rules the Ranga Nui. There. <laughs> that is a solemn enough start. I am a lore chanter in the college there. Or at least a student of lore and a chanter both. Oh, family back in Utai. I have five older siblings and my mother and father. My fathers are Coral Mason and favoured by the Rangu Noai. It was he who engineered the Gate of Great Teeth. My two brothers have taken up my father's work, and my mother encouraged my sister to sail. It leaves me free to pursue other things. If there is wealth of knowledge just within the walls of the college, and beyond it more than I could learn in ten lifetimes, but I can try all the same. Eh, what well, made you leave the college? I was on the usual path at first. Theology, the traditions, when the Gate of Great Teeth was completed. It was all my father had hoped for. The greatest commission he had ever received. But it was also a sign that Rawatai was changing, looking inward. Meanwhile, I was neck deep in the writing of a dozen nations, marveling at all the things that lay beyond our borders. And in so many of these, those bo books and records, I found accounts of ancient Ingwith. The Edwins hold a great hunger for Ingwith relics, and why shouldn't they? It was the civilizations from which the Gravathans learned to read souls. I decided that my third degree would be in history, and that I would study the Enwithans. They were at the heart of so much discussion abroad, so many discoveries. It drew some mockery. We'd watch a dear draw itself into several conflicts with the Gravathans over those ruins. Takoa had its own concerns. Then I found it, a section of Tanvi Otoa, an Adrian translation of the ancient Endwiffin script. Just there, without explanation, it seemed like a gift from the gods. Would you like to know? Tell me about the lore chanters. My elder brothers think we spend our days in song, weaving reefs, reefs from flowers, but the truth is far less exciting than that. The college preserves what knowledge our people have gathered, I would have I would have it said that the Lord Chanters are Ruatai, for without them we would have no beginning, no sense of how far we've come. We would forget ourselves with every generation. I'm only a student yet, but someday I'll return and tell the keeper what I learned, and she will add my first to the chant. What is the yeah, what is this what is this gate of great teeth? Much as it sounds, a maze of walls, like the teeth of some no, no, nautical terror. It sits outside the city and guards Takoa from invaders and storms. The storms have always been more trouble. Uatari, the angry titans, thrown themselves against Ruatai's shores. Invaders? I'm not so sure about that. Uh, sure, sure about. But perhaps I'm like the man who... Being dry, throws off his raincoat during a storm. Can I laugh, so my mother would be ha have me believe. Uh, is what's a Rangunu? A king, a great king. Ruler over all Rutai. He leads our people well, and he has treated my family very well. My father and he are great friends. As much as one can be friends with a king. I have other questions. 
Tell me about your tie. Ah, Rawatai. Shall I describe the pearl white sands, the sapphire waters, the multi hued tiles of the rooftops, like a mosaic upon the coast? <laughs> sorry. Don't be sorry. Uh, was there something to say? Tell me about the kingdom of Ruotai in general. It's a long journey by ship to the north, past Exebatai, and across the sea. We have settled much off the Gulf and established more recent trading colonies along the coast. We lived as best we can, like everyone else. Our land is plagued by storms, and so we stand together. Whatever corner of Ruotai we hail from, otherwise, we never survive. Tell me about your city Koa. is doubly famed, a royal city and home to the Coral Harbor. The Ranganui's palace is there, and we've a fleet of royal ships sitting outside the gate of Great Teeth. Every so often, you'll hear the roar of a cannon being tested. <laughs> the finest ships in Ruatai, and so the world, are anchored there, and some of our brightest minds toil away at the artillery. My mother, for instance. Myself, I have no talent with gunpowder. The core is also home to the Lord College, of course, and we get great many people travelling long distances to speak with the Lord Keeper, or else hear the chants and pursue the books. At least, that is how it was when I was younger. Things were a little different when I left. You may say the winds are changing. The Pafari, they are traditionalist, in a way, the Ranganua son stands amongst their number. Talk to talk at the dinner table has changed how from how far a fleet Ruatai ship might sail to how well defended our borders are, how far we have turned from the old ways. Then talk turns to bearing talk turns to bearing Edrin and Felian merchant ships and Kara sides. Things were difficult. When I left, there was much arguing among the elders. I trust the king has kept the peace, but I worry sometimes that things have taken a turn for the worst. There aren't traditionalists? Oh, I am a regular firebrand. If you ask the other chanters, I don't see why I can't appreciate our traditions and chart a better future. But so goes the debate. It sounds like you miss home. Some part of it, the silver cliffs, the sea, those at least no one can change. The day I boarded the ship for Adir, the sunrise was gold upon the water. I nearly leapt overboard and swam for home. Clear. Okay, uh, Tagore has a lot of artillery. Ruatai was had a lot of artillery. We've made a great we've made great advances with explosives. One of our artillery masters uh, advised on the Godhammer bomb during the Saints War. Actually, in the rear tie itself, itself, our efforts are more modest. Bombards, cannons. We're having some luck with mortars. You might ask my sister if you ever visit Tekoa. She captains the Rutahana. She knows far more than I do and enjoys great fame for it. It may not be very traditional, but even the most strictest demagogue won't touch the subject of artillery. They'd lose what support they gather. Do, o do only Olamai live there? Far from it. The Olamai arrived more recently and from the greater number, but others have joined us, so long as they call themselves subjects of the Raga Noai. Some of my neighbours are Orlans, for instance. Fine people, though they care little for the sea. People here say the coastal Oar are cruel people. Cruel in the same manner that Orlans are feral and the Pale Elves grateful. Yeah, kind of chuckles. I know I conquered Ruatai long ago and drove their enemies from the lands in doing it. Today, the great kingdom of Ruatai holds humans, Orlans, elves, and even island Anua. Kind of flashes a quick smile. Uh, what a campaign of conquest says about those responsible. You'll have to ask the Edwins. In any case, yes, the reputation persists. Good if you want to fight and work, less so if you want... If you, if you like to be a cook. So these people who are after you... Oh, 
Mm, yeah. Mm. Yes, I ran into them in India, or rather, they sought me out. In India, there were many people who had observed the Anglican ruins in the dire deer route, and I spent some time conferring with experts. In the libraries, I found accounts of a site in Damatai, and it was there I travelled next. But just before that, I found myself approached by a woman in dark robes who bade me abandon my studies for my own safety. I ignored her, of course, but I began to have the sense, after that, of being followed. And after that, well, one ambush on the road I could call misfortune, but three. I, I thought it only fair to delve into their activities at first. I found a word of a leading key, but past that it was all ravings and superstitions. I might as well have gone around asking whether someone had even seen a whale flying through the air. Some might well tell me yes, but the validity of their accounts is questionable. They don't seem worried about this. <laughs> they haven't had much luck. The last one came up on me at a thick site and slipped on a muddy beam. I tried to catch him. Reflex. I should think, but he went right over the side and down a hundred feet. I am not really sure what he had in mind, but I doubt that was it. <laughs> Do that. What is the sacred boot? Book you're looking for? Oratoa. Avi Oratoa. It's not really a book. It's been passed down over the years in the form of a chant. I actually found it a little strange at first, seeing it set down in stone. And in stone. It's not quite the same as a song of worship, though we have paeans to the gods as well. More a kind of moral guide. It gives us something to aspire to. The uh, model of a virtuous citizen of Rawatai. So why look uh, rational, clever? Uh... Will describe these fortuitous citizens. Dutiful, learned, honest. The sticking point is loyal. Loyal to the people of Rawatai above all others. Fearless in their defense and bold in aspiration. Tireless in battle or industry. An inspiration to one's people. But it seems it's not that far a leap from there to the idea that we must cast out foreign influences. That will you aspire to be? Doesn't everyone want to be a good citizen? That's certainly true. You think that Emerthans were the true authors? I don't know that the distinction is necessarily important. Rawatai has a long history, and our people have come from many different places. It matters less who wrote it than that I have found pieces of the verses all around the world. Wherever it came from, it will be Rawatai that decides what becomes of it. All the races and peoples of our kingdom coming together to create a great empire. Great empire. <clears throat> <laughs> you see then that I am loyal in my way. Uh, so why look for it out here? There have been arguments as to the chance true interpretation. New translations even. But any rendition of it I find in the ruins of Engwith will predate those translations by 2,000 years. And finding it here also proves that we still have much to gain from trading with other cultures. I'd be lying if I said I'm not looking forward to seeing the look on everyone's faces when I get back. But in the long term, I just think that we can learn a lot from the Anguithians. A civilization like that is something to aspire to. A model for Rawatai as a whole, and not just its people. And... I want to prove that all of this is worthwhile. Traveling, seeing the world for what it is. It's been so different from sitting in the Chanter Hall and studying books. I came all this way just to win an argument? <laughs> More or less. It wasn't a popular theory when I suggested it. The idea that we shared the Tanvi Oratoha with some older culture, I mean, doesn't mean it's not true. Certainly true. It doesn't help that my family is from the Deadfire Islands. If I had a copper pond for every chanter who suggested that it's just not in my nature to conquer. My siblings, my parents, they make up for it. They build walls and cannons and ships. 
I've tried to explain. It isn't that I think those things aren't necessary. But if Rawatai closes itself off from trade, turns on its own people over tradition, we will fall behind, and then we'll be the ones getting conquered. I think my father tries to understand at least. Uh, you're being hunted by the leading key? So it seems. It's all rather absurd. What harm could I possibly do them by finding this text? Perhaps they don't like Ruatai. Where did this all begin? I ran into them in Adir, or rather they sought me out, so I've already done this one. Library ship. Do you know anything about this place? Cad Noir is a marvel, an ugly crumbling marvel, but even so, it's overshadowed by what it sits upon. But the keep itself can tell you much about the Adwin settlement, a very rigid people, I find. Yes. But in again, else to chit chat about? Yes, my friend. Right. So I think we'll probably rest up then. I think I need to have that rest. Won't have any of my stuff back. Uh, up I can speak to more to Durance. Okay, so get that over us because apparently he has a lot to talk about so yeah do that as well Durance is sick Doubts and curiosity plague you. You're skinning your knuckles on the wrong door. Do you know anything about Deerwood and the summoning nation? Deerwood's the best of them. Still has spirit, if a land can have one. It's a place where a man can walk freely, even make new roads. But that's a rare thing in this world. Its generations, however, are damned, and so no no new footfalls may spell an end to it. You mean the Hollowborn? Yes, Eothis last stab at revenge after he was ended. Eothis was the, the god of rebirth, and his light does not fall on Deerwood. He had some claim, and his doing, his death, has closed the halls to no soul. Maybe, maybe. Uh, he scoffs, I don't believe it. The problem is closer than that, and as always, it involves women and men, and they are always circling, within and without. The Phalian Republics, Dacrus, the Saints War, one big bladed spiral, shredding everything around it. How do you feel about the Philadian Republics? Durant snorts, fortune seekers, guard in robes of office, manipulators, traders, and traitors all. Don't hold them in high regard. Hmm? Any country so obsessed with style might as well be wearing scarves around their eyes. Keep vigilant or they'll turn you into slaves as soon as an as ink dries on the trade treaty. The Deerwood and all its internal riches is too tempting, especially if someone else tames the country and face painters for them. Painters? Scribes, Glafathans, cluster around the ruins like flies. But what about the re Adkaris? Durant's face Blushes and a sheen of sweat forms on his brow. Too many adjectives to that so called nation. Civil unrest, economic collapse, all tinder, just needing the right spark. Uh, some farmer shows up, takes a god into himself, then takes a crown on his lead. This divine kingdom he tries to set up goes about as well as you expect. A trickle of sweat runs down the side of Durang's cheek and sinks into his beard. Suddenly the population of heretics goes up by about half and again, and Eothis starts turning this bloodstained gaze to every blasphemer he can find. Clearing house is one way to put it. His face darkens and his eye and narrow urges another. Put them and their god in their place. 
Though, with enough force to kill that damn country too. You're not a supporter of the country of the Dakers. A loaf passes by casually, muttering under his breath. Surely you know where this is going to go. Yeah, yeah. It's not a country, it's a gathering of cowards, a dear puppets. They used to be optimistic bunch. A bright bunch. Durant laughs at bright as if a private joke. Was their undoing? Should have embraced the misery without letting our farmer lead them to a brighter ruin. Uh, I'm almost earthless puppets too. But at the end of it, they dangled on his strings, Wadewin dangled on theirs. They would never have any had any success on the battlefield had not their god come down. The Saints War, Duran Stiles. They call on their god to have a chance. Tell me about yeah, tell me what, how you think the Saints War is. Uh, Duran's eyeballs draw together in a frown. Then he grunts, keep forgetting your feet are new to Deerwood. The Saints War. It wasn't a war. It was a god stepping past himself. The country of Ray and Saris and all their heathens. They're paying for it now. Although by my count, the fire should have roared through their country with more force, catching all their souls. Truth, it wasn't even a war. It was a cautionary tale about pride. Specifically, Widewind's pride. He should have stayed a farmer. Was what? 15, 16 years ago? 2807. Up, 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 up. Uh, my memories are back with our younger me. I don't hold on to dates. I hold on to actions and causes. Yeah, because I know that's wrong. Uh, the war was an act of arrogance. Born straight from the Attic's Chris. Twitching legs. A man thinking of himself more than a man. Duran stops. Want to kill someone? Tell him, a, tell him a god speaks through him. Then tell him he means him to lead which puts him at the front of an, any army. An army was as strong as you expect for we Adkaris. As sick as that country was to begin with, yet a war was likely just what they needed. What's wrong with the country? The Acarus has its share of troubles. It shares all of them. It deserved Wadewin. He was the light that led them to flame. The Acarus was in decline. A deer poised already eating its veins. Economic bleeding. Uh, dying of their faith. Durang frowns. Then a woodwind, this farmer, claimed to take up Eothus in the flesh and gives them the worst kind of hope. What happened then? They crowd him. Durang taps his head, making a slight bow, and when he, his face turns back to you, he's wearing a feral smell. Then make him king. The worst kind of blasphemy. And once he wears the crown on his head and the god in his flesh, why, he starts making changes, define changes. Durant's eyes blaze. Then he decides he's going to change us, save us. How? He marches on Deerwood to free us, to free us from our beliefs, like he freed the other souls in Yarkaris. Cold Morn offers up his belly with no resistance, and it's spared. Durant snarls. The bloodshed starts when he sacks Mercy Vale. A touch of irony, and that puts it to the flame. Hey, Coldmorn. Durant spits now. Cowards and Coldmorn is an apt name for them. They lay still, frozen, while the fellows burned. They pay Magran's price one day for such coverings. What did Eothis do next? Eothis keeps marching. Eobard takes to the trees, cutting at his flanks, his scouts, his troops. It seemed near hopeless. Duran's face becomes grim, then smiles slightly until Hargot Citadel, the Godhammer. There we put him to the flame, burned the god out of him if there was ever one to begin with. Doesn't brave men and women take to the bridge, make a stand. Then we torched him there with fire of the Godhammer. So what is the Godhammer? Gods have taken flesh, in all respects, taking willing and unwilling vessels. It's not a violation. It's what gods do. As long as they accept all that comes with it. Men are weak. Gods? Well, we showed old Widewen that he was flesh and blood, no matter how much light was pouring out of his farmer's hands. Took men he takes pleasure in this, doesn't he? A god hammer. Judgment. Who 
left him dead at Halgot Citadel. It was a weapon of Deerwood's people, their independence. There are a few that would deny that Eirthus overstepped. The Godhammer reminded Eirthus of this. A fire and force too, so terrifying, so bright, it burned a god away. Rans holds his staff and his hands lock around it, tracing the etchings. As you watch the top of the staff blossoms, burn brightly, and Durant speaks, his face illuminated in fire. A weapon that would burn brighter than Aerith. We led him to it and burned him at the stake. The stake was Godhammer, and we impaled him on it. We fashioned it. This nation did, yes, with its faithful. We weren't going to stand for anyone. We didn't need a pretender in a vessel. We primed an a vessel and then let it fly. It took only taunts by men and that was enough to lure him across the bridge and right into the sun. It led Viacarus, Viacarus, see how bright their arrogance had become and become a symbol by which we answered their purge with one of our own. Oh, geez. Uh. We started saving the Aeothasians from themselves, burning any that didn't die with their god. Well, a deer and Durant are going to get on like a house on fire. Heresy here in the Deerwood comes with a more personal touch. This seems a wounded enemy is still dangerous. Big he's like a fox or a jackal. Huh? As I see it. Every Aeothasian who still lives in the Deerwood puts the nation at risk. Is another dagger held to the throat of our faith? Root them out, burn them, or send them back to Ray and Ceres to wallow in the blood of their failure. I should put the region and its history. We have a wheel's eyes painted on your skin. There's more mysteries than questions, and even a marching force of answers won't placate you. Even soldiers need to let their thoughts settle, just as their priests do. I'm not going to be talking to him until 